full-size half-ton two- and four-wheel drive GMC pickup trucks and on select two-wheel drive S15 GMC pickup trucks. But remember, 7.9% financing ends February 22nd. Now's the time to buy your new GMC truck and save in financing. 7.9% financing. Don't miss it. See your Metro Detroit GMC truck dealer today. In this video, I pretend to know what I'm talking about. I feel emasculated. I do a little pouting. And I finally see the light. Oh, and something about a carburetor or some such. So I had a viewer, and dare I say friend, even though I've never met him, um, and a brother in Christ, with it, which is the most important relationship. Um, he asked if he could send me a carburetor off of his 86 GMC Sierra. Said, absolutely send it on over. I have bought a standard high grade kit, 1504A, made in that USA country. All B, USA. Hardly ever see that anymore. Went ahead and got an FLA 8 float with it while I was there. And then the owner sent along a fuel filter that he had purchased previously. So, without further ado, let's just dig into this thing and uh, then we can start getting it cleaned up. Those things are quadra junks. Why are you even here? Go away. Go away. I think I'll put on gloves for this. Makes me feel more surgical working on a carburetor. Okay, first thing, one inch wrench, get the bolt, the filter out of there. Pretty clean. Spring out. Okay, I'm going to get the choke lever linkage disconnected here. Now the vacuum brake diaphragm. I forgot to mention it at the very beginning, but if you are needing to do this, take all the pictures you think you'll ever need beforehand or draw diagrams just for insurance now because this is a late model carburetor um, and due to emission standards in the mid 80s they just riveted the choke cover down they didn't want you messing with it anymore thank you government um, so what we have to do we have to drill these rivet heads off I've just taken a pick and I've scratched the main the center notch on the housing I just scratched a line in there so I would know where to line that back up just taking a 3 16 bit those rivet heads off once you see them spin just stop you want to keep these keep hold of these little retainers check our spring that looks great Screw out here. Now there's going to be a seal here where that choke shaft went in. Just pop that out. That'll get replaced. Okay, now we're flipped around to the front side. We've got a small roll pin this power valve lever we're just going to knock that through just 
should be able to stop right there without taking it all the way out. Get my lever off of here. Okay, this is our idle stop solenoid. Um, just keeps just keeps the idle up if you're using the AC or something, otherwise it would really want to bog down the engine at idle, so they just use it to step the idle up when you need it. Um, the fully electronic carburetors would have idle speed control and be a big old assembly here. Take her off the same way. Now we're going to remove the secondary metering rod holder here and the rods. Okay, now we're going to take the air horn off the bowl. Um, to do that, there are nine screws holding it down. So we'll do that. Now our guy that sent this to me made this handy little piece of wood to ship in a box which was an excellent idea but that means we have to remove the mounting bolts at least on the front side so we'll go ahead and do that when I get ready to ship it back to them we'll just reuse all this Angry beavers and all. All right. Did I say nine? I meant eleven. Did I say eleven? I meant thirteen. Yeah, we got some problems, but that's good. I'm glad we found some problems, because he was having problems. So three of the four little brass vent tubes or enrichment tubes or whatever they're called have fallen out. I mean, that's almost 75%. Can't see them yet, but they're in there. So we're going to pull this gasket off and get my power valve out of here with it. There comes the choke lever. My plunger out of here and that spring. Is it wet or just shiny? I guess it's just shiny. There's one of the tubes. There's one of the tubes. There's one of the tubes. Take out the bowl insert. And we'll get the baffle. And we'll get the ba... And we'll get the baffle. So we'll get our float out of here along with our needle. If 
possible. Okay, I found another possible problem. Well, it most certainly be a problem here, but the seat was just barely, I wouldn't even call it finger tight. So I have no doubt fuel was leaking past that thing down on the bottom. I think there should be a seal under that. I thought typically there was. I could be mistaken. Anyway, now let's go after the jets. Right down in here. Which is what these two rods hanging off the power piston went down into. Now we've got a little baffle here I need to pull out. Just like that. And then we can get to our check ball. Take this plug out. Turn it upside down. our little BB and our spring. The spring was from the bottom of the power piston from up inside there. Just want to want to be clear here. Now do you technically call these feedback models if you only have the mixture control and not the TPS or the idle control? I don't know. I guess it's a feedback model. I took it off our little shipping platform because we need to take the base off. Now if you're working on one of these later ones and you've got solid plugs down here, it probably means it's never been rebuilt or at least no one was brave enough to cut in here and remove the plugs and uh, back out the mixture screws. So obviously this one has been modified already. Someone's done that. Now these are kind of a D-shaped screw head in there, you know, in a manufacturer's quest to ever frustrate a do-it-yourselfer or a small-time mechanic. They've always got to do things special. You know how that goes. Now I'm just sure I had a bit to go on my carburetor adjustment tool, um, but I can absolutely not find it. So I'll have to order another one, I guess. But for now, I can reach in here with my needle nose and turn them out. And I'm just going to see, just for curious curiosity's sake, how where they were adjusted. So that's half, one, one and a half, two, two and a half, three, three and a half, three and three quarters.
So one thing I'm going to remove that you don't have to is there's a metering screw in here and this is where the power power piston and the spring were in here with the uh, two main metering rods and then right next to it you got that screw and unfortunately it's also the D-shaped head on it but I'm going to struggle through with the needle nose see if I can get a count of how many turns it's in half, one, half, two, half, three, I think it's tight. The only reason you would really need to remove it is if you suspect it's dirty and is giving you problems and I really don't know how you would suspect that if you didn't remove it. So there you go. Ah. There's the gasket for the seat. Kind of forgot about it for them for a moment. You don't want to do that. Now I had a goal of by tonight this thing would be in a bucket soaking, getting clean, and then I'll come back tomorrow and rinse everything off. Uh, I'm running out of time for tonight. I mean I I've got stuff to do. So um, I was gonna disassemble the throttle body completely, take all the plates out, remove the shafts feels to me like we're going to have to put bushings in the the primaries so um, as much as I'd like to get that all disconnected taken apart first I'm just going to throw it in here and if there's a little bit more cleaning up we need to do later we can certainly do that so I'm going to get all the parts in that I need, and then we'll get back with you. Now you might be asking yourself, what the heck did that guy just put that carburetor into? Well, I'll tell you. Um, in my constant search for something, something that works well, well, it's... Um, it's a 50-50 mix of pine sol and water, believe it or not. Now so far I like it for two reasons. It's cheap, it's easy, seems to be working, and it smells nice. Now I really like the old-fashioned chem dip carburetor cleaner where you put the stuff in the bucket and you let it sit. That's just exactly how I've treated this. Um, it sat for about a day and it's working really well now I remember that smell I'll remember that carburetor cleaner smell the rest of my life and I'm kinda nostalgic about it I kinda like it in a way you know um, but I haven't met a woman yet that really did like it and you know with this pine saw your bride may just think you've been in the kitchen mopping the floor might work out pretty nice for you so anyway, I'm going to take this out, finish brushing off the loose stuff, spray it down, and then I'll meet you back in here, show you what I got. I must say, I am pretty impressed with how half and half Pine Sol cleaned this thing up. Look at all the stamped steel parts. I, like I said, I just took my nylon brush, spray water, the spray water took off the majority of the residue. I mean, that's pretty darn impressive. Bolts are all nice and clean, or the screws rather. That's what the body looks like. air horn 
The only trouble I really had is where you would expect it, where it's open to the intake. And that, you know, it's just the built up carbon and oil deposits. That's going to be the case no matter what you're using. Most of it came off the bottom side of the, the bowl here. Just a quick spray with carburetor cleaner in a can and the brush will get that off, no problem. And I could have spent a little more time on the throttle body here. Um, I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm actually going farther. Since we're here, and this, this throttle shaft I would say is right on the fence of needing bushings. I think it would still run and not have a, a drivability issue. But um, we're this far apart. I want it to work for a guy, so we're going to throw bushings in here, which means I need to take all that apart. Um, and we are going to be replating all the CAD on here anyway. So at this point, if you're just doing a maintenance rebuild, go ahead and rebuild it right now. I mean, you got it clean, you're ready to go. But we're kind of doing a, a restoration, so to speak, here. So I've got to get everything apart that needs CAD plating. Um, honestly, all the green painted parts look very good. So I'm just going to leave them. I was paint, planning on painting them, but I don't think I need to. And we will go from there. Well, we got her all refinished. If you didn't watch that video, maybe you should go back and do that. It's pretty awesome. Um, but we're going to keep on building this thing, rebuilding it. So we're going to start with the base plate, the throttle body, the whatever you want to call it, and put new bushings in for the primary butterflies, throttle plates. Um, and I am going to need an appropriate hammer. Nope. 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 Will you cotton picking? Oh, here it is. No. God. Maybe the kids have been messing with it. Oh! Yeah! There it is. Alright, you gotta... You gotta simmer down a little there, Poncho. Thank you. Well, at least you can say you've never met anyone like me before. So I've already been playing around with one side. I've got the brass bushing in there. I think in the instructions, or actually I don't think it came with instructions, but this is um, Jet Performance Products 201-102. So it's a palindrome. So I just have red Loctite that I'm going to use. 
Um, and I would just kind of play around and try to see if the bushing wants to go in to the bore before you do anything. Um, I have one that acts like it's big enough it wants to go in and then the first one I did it was too small and so I ran a, a drill bit into it I think this one will go in uh, it, it also helps to pay attention this this hole was um, there was a shoulder in there or still is so the bushing didn't want to go in because of the shoulder this side there is a shoulder but it's way back here so uh, I don't need to worry about that either and we're just going to get it flush no sense making rocket science out of this I'm making a mess with the thread locker though. Okay, then the kit comes with a reamer that will have tightened it up. So I'm going to see if I can get it by hand. There we go. And that is exceptionally tight. That feels great. There won't be a bit of a problem with that. I think I may have had it in backwards, but that's okay. doesn't matter. And we can proceed. Now, the other thing I want to be sure to do before I go in tonight is I want to put JB Weld over these old plugs. It has been known to cause leaks in the past. Not on this carburetor, but uh, in general. And it's not getting any younger, so we might as well just do it. Popsicle stick would be better for this, but I don't have any in here, so... All right, I have them all covered up with JB Weld, so we're going to let that cure overnight. We're going to let the Loctite cure overnight, and we will rejoin you tomorrow. Get a good night's rest now.
There seems to be a whole lot of debate and controversy over what to do with these little screws. Guys don't want to stake them or use a punch because they don't want to deform the the shafts, which is an acceptable argument. Um, and then there are those that don't want to use Loctite. And then there's a whole sub argument on red or blue Loctite. Well, one thing I know, if you back up the screw head with a big punch, and you deform it like the factory did, she ain't coming out. And she's not going to bend the shaft. So, why don't you just do that? I, I, I don't know. Don't even monkey around with a another little punch. Just get a small tack hammer and do it already. So what a guy did was he went to, to the Napa when he was in town. Oh, I still need to modify that one. Yeah, that'll do it. I got one of these dual-ended valve stem remover tools. I had to file out um, the big end for the big old valve stem and that fits really nice in there. A couple bucks will buy you that. If you want a cheap alternative. So we will turn these back in real quick. Okay, I've got those backed out three and a half turns just like they were when I got the carb. I'm guessing it's probably been messed with a little bit, trying to compensate for um, poor running. Um, so, you know, he'll have to deal with that when he gets it back on the truck. And that'll just take, really, hooking a vacuum gauge up to the, up to the engine while it's running and... Uh, Tuning each one to the highest vacuum. So we're going to get this throttle assembly gasket on here. Things start looking real good here. Get our three screws in. Okay, I've got my pump ball and the screw that holds it down in. I've got the metering screw back in, three and a half turns. I've got the seat with the gasket in, um, through the power piston spring back where it goes. A um, little baffle here where it goes. I'm going to replace my cup and spring. So I'm just going to dig in here. This quadrajet does have the spring under the cup. We'll just just yeah, just go ahead and ruin it. There we go. This cup is extremely brittle. Well that would that doesn't help anybody. Okay. tool here slide her over yeah 
And there you go. Isn't that nice? Oh, I've also got my jets in there. Forgot about that little detail. Just simple stuff. As I'm sure you understand, there's going to be a lot of variations of these carburetors through the years. Um, so you just got to pay attention to the equipment you took off and what needs to go back on. You have electric choke, you have non-electric choke. Um, so a lot of these are going to have a, the seal here going in there. Um, this one doesn't have it. This passage goes nowhere. So just got to be careful about that. Now I've greased up the seal in there. Greased up one and you put them opposite directions, the, the lips of the seal. And I put a little slick them on the shaft there. Now I need a lever on this. Now for the trick. Please excuse the AC noise. So I threw my seat in there, or, so I threw my needle in there and everything and got everything set um, as far as float height. And when you set the float height, just barely push it down against the needle and you're going to feel it come to a stop. You can keep pushing and it's going to teeter-totter up farther. Don't do that. Just light push and then Went 13 30 seconds from the toe end of the float to the casting here and I've got that so we're good there I took that little clip off of the needle and this is just where you bend it by hand get my needle out don't know if you can even see this clearly on camera or not. It's so cotton pick and tiny. Makes a guy feel like Andre the Giant when he's working with that stuff. Okay. I'm going to hook that little wire clip over the, the back end of the, the center here where it's round. Those slots are very inviting to hook that wire through, but uh, that's not where you want it. Get in there. Fall in there. Come on. Come on. There you go. Okay. All right. this guy back in here already got the gasket on top the new one 
accelerator pump. Whoop, see, I already forgot something. The little cover for our float arm there. Everything seemed too easy, and that was why. Okay. Wow, I hit those rods right off the bat there. All right, so now we're going to put the gasket on. No, I'm not either. I am going to finish up the air horn before I go any farther with that so that I don't drop any screws down there. So let's do this guy. Now, if you're an eccentric little Looney Tune like myself, you may have taken the, the plates off of above the secondaries there, just like I did. Took them out, took the shaft out, wanted to clean all that up. I left this, I don't even know what you call it, but it rides around the eccentric, and that's what the, uh, the little bracket for the, the secondary rods rides on. Get screwed down to there. Um... And you may be scratching your head, just how the heck did I do that, and how do I get them back together? Well, um, so you have a pin here that needs to go through this slot. You have a preloaded spring that goes around that pin. You also have a plastic cam that you need to get into the right position on the shaft. And uh, so we take this piece of metal out, um, and this this piece of plastic is offset. I don't know if I can show you well enough assembled here, but you can probably see that the hole is way over here. It's offset towards the front of the carburetor. That's where you want the majority of the plastic on that little cam. Otherwise, it isn't going to work for you. Um, and then you just slide it through, get this pin through, and get the spring rehooked around the pin. Now, you can also I'm assuming take the spring pin out, you've got a little set screw that holds the preload on it, all that stuff, and that's what gives those flaps their snap back. You know, so when you romp on it, so forth. Um, and then you can push your roll pin back in with that piece. So wanted to show you that just in case you got confused. So I'm going to put these secondary plates back on now, and we'll get back with you in a bit. Okay, are you ready? Now for the hard part. No, it's not that bad. Okay, we're going to put the top gasket on and the air horn. And you got to watch approximately three things here. Um, first of all, i got the power piston, the accelerator pump, we got to hold down. Uh, we got to get it over this solenoid here, and we've got to get this choke rod through the right place as well. Now I've taken the proper gasket. Make sure you get the right gaskets when when you're building these things. The kits usually come with a couple options, no matter what you're doing. You know these carburetors changed a bit through the years, so we're gonna get everything through the right place here. I've pre-bent this little flap that goes underneath the power piston arms. So I'm going to sneak that down there. Okay. Get it over our rods. There we go. Get it over our solenoid. And then position it over our alignment pegs there. Okay, so those three things are set. Now you don't want to let your rods pop back out. 
So what we're going to do, we're going to put a screwdriver just like that over the top of both of those. Now we've got to get our four tubes in the right spot and everything else lined up. So I'm going to start the, uh, the choke rod is the highest thing sticking up here. And if you can get a hand for this part, so much the better. Come on, capture that choke rod there. Now I'm going to start the solenoid in place and the piston there. And I think everything's ready. And there we go. Easy, right? I'm just going to put a couple of screws in here real quick so that spring tension doesn't let it come back up. Well, there we go guys got her done it's looking good um, I think it's gonna work just great for a guy I hope I've got to get it boxed up and sent back to him it's taken me way too long to get to this point 
um, just like things go, and I know he understands that, um, but anyway, you like to get quicker turnaround. But we got a cab plated, um, I didn't show it, I got the electric choke unit back in there, and you just use self tapping screws to do that where the rivets were. Fuel filters back in there, I put a T in there for the vacuum that was loose. Um, we found some issues with it, I'm so glad we did. Hopefully it's going to work a whole lot better for a guy. Like I said, he'll have to throw it on there, play around with the mixture screws, the idle speed screw. Um, now that it's kind of rebuilt and everything's back where it should be, it's probably going to run a little different going right back onto the engine. So, man, I've got a mess going on again. Always gets this way when I'm doing stuff. Now on yours, if you're watching this and you don't have this exact model, this is an M4ME. Um, we've got that mixture solenoid in there. Um, that's really the only electronic feature, feature of this one other than your electric idle stop there. Um, you know, you can get much less complicated quadrajets and much more, uh, at least as far as electronics, feedback models and so forth. Um, I guess it does have an electric choke as well. But if you're watching this, you have a Quadrajet, not this exact model. Obviously, you'll get a book, basically, with your rebuild kit. Um, just go by the instructions. Use those par parts diagrams. You will find your model in here. Find your part number. And use those... Um, values for making adjustments obviously uh, if you want to get in a little more depth as far as making adjustments you might need a vacuum uh, vacuum gun I forget whatever whatever they're called you know what they're called and then this little scale degree scale with the level on it that's magnetic and it goes on to the uh, choke plate there and you can make adjustments with that I'm not going to get into all that with you because I don't think we need to get into that so there we go I'll get some pictures of it close-up pictures um, I hope he's happy with it gonna send it back and that is it so thank you so much for joining me God bless you guys we will see you on the next one We suggest that you like and subscribe now.